policies. So what factors caused you to say that it's a bubble? Well, generally non-productive assets <clears throat> remain the... You know, hey, YouTube. Today I wanted to talk about Bitcoin. Normally I wouldn't talk about crypto on my channel since I cover businesses, but I do feel like there are some very important lessons in investing history to be taught that are playing out right in front of us that intertwine crypto and business. And so with everybody talking about Sam Bankman Freed and the epic collapse of FTX, I feel like there isn't enough coverage and there isn't enough being said about CEOs or owners who decided to put a large portion of their business's balance sheet into crypto. And in specific, I wanted to talk about MicroStrategy because MicroStrategy's uh, biggest owner, the creator of the business, he levered up three times the equity that they had to buy Bitcoin. And he put almost the entire value of his business into Bitcoin at about $30,000. And it's not looking so good because MicroStrategy's shareholder equity has diminished. Shareholder equity that was once at almost a billion dollars is now at negative 200 million because of his very highly leveraged, highly speculative play into Bitcoin. And so to begin, to show you how we got here, I wanted to give you a Cliff Notes version of what MicroStrategies does as a business. Besides their interest in Bitcoin, MicroStrategies is an American-based business that basically does business intelligence services, mobile software, and cloud-based services. It's a business that Michael Saylor started with only $250,000 back in 1989. And in the world of those services, Michael Saylor is a very well-known individual. He's a very highly successful individual who has built himself uh, a very high net worth. And he is undoubtedly one of the most successful people in the whole country in terms of what he does in that field. Um, Michael Saylor is an incredibly successful entrepreneur who used his intelligence regarding uh, cloud-based services to grow microservices to a business that did about $600 million of revenue in 2014. And at its best, microservices has done about $100 million worth of net income. Um, right before microservices started buying Bitcoin, they had about $800 million worth of assets. They had about $380 million worth of liabilities for a shareholder equity of $420 million, give or take. And they had a business that, you know, was declining in revenue. It was going down uh, in terms of market share since 2014, but it was still relatively healthy in terms of the income that it would generate. And on a normalized basis, it seems that MicroStrategies is a business at current levels that will give you about a $500 million revenue and about a 40 or $50 million net income in a good year. Um, and that seems, it seems like that's what they can give you on average. And so basically, uh, as the Bitcoin speculation has unfolded, MicroStrategies is pretty much two different businesses that trade under one ticker. We have the cloud services businesses, and then we have the Bitcoin speculation. And I'd like you to look at this business as if it's two separate things underneath that don't connect with each other, because they really don't. And what Michael Saylor did is he decided to speculate the entire value of the business times three. And it might even be more than times three. Uh, and he put it all into Bitcoin. And so as a business that once had $420 million worth of shareholder equity, it skyrocketed up to about a billion dollars worth of shareholder equity at its peak with the Bitcoin purchases. But now with the decline in the Bitcoin price, it's now at a negative equity of about $300 million. And that's before 
we come out with the next report that will tell us exactly how much they have. Um, and so we're looking at more impairments in sight for the business. I expect shareholder equity to continue to drop as the reports come out. And so they basically, in a three-year time span, went from a business that had uh, a very healthy balance sheet, a lot of equity, no risk of bankruptcy in sight, and three years later, we're now in a position where they're not going to be able to meet their obligations if the price of Bitcoin doesn't recover. Because they leverage so much into Bitcoin in such a short time span that there's really nothing they can do other than hope that the price goes up. And so the question is, what does the timeline look like? How did we get here? And so the best way for me to break this down for you is chronologically, because a lot happened between 2019 and the present day with micro strategies. And so to start, if we go even farther back, as I talked about, micro strategies from 1989 to 2019 was a business that pretty much only exclusively focused on their services, their cloud services, their business intelligence services, etc. And they used that business to keep reinvesting. And they used most of their cash as they grew. But as they got to about 2019, they had an excess of cash for what they had historically. And so um, Michael Saylor started to look for alternate investments for the cash that the company had. And right before the Bitcoin craze of 2020, Michael Saylor started to buy Bitcoin with his very first uh, purchases, as you can see on the screen, um, reported August 11th of 2020. He purchased 21,000 Bitcoin for $250 million. And that, at the time, was almost all of the cash that that business held, that MicroStrategies held. And so at that moment, he basically used the entire cash balance of what they had. It was the equivalent of what they would probably regain in shareholder equity in five years. And he bought Bitcoin all at once in one quarter. And at the time, that was huge. And at the time, that purchase is one of the things that drove the greater interest in Bitcoin because people started to wonder why this guy, why this CEO, Michael Saylor, was buying the asset. And as Bitcoin started to uh, become more and more talked about, Michael Saylor started to buy more. And as you can see here on the table, Michael Saylor quickly accumulated a lot more than the cash balance that his company had. He started to take debt right here at the end of 2020 to buy Bitcoin. And so not only did he lever, or not only did he invest all of the cash of his business into Bitcoin, he took on loans for the business that didn't exist before. Billions of dollars of loans. Loans that outweigh the total value of his current business. And if you look here, he started buying more and more in larger and larger purchases. For example, right here in February of 2021, he bought 20,000 Bitcoin for a total purchase price of a billion dollars. But what you'll find interesting is that he bought, the, he bought more Bitcoin only six months prior at a price that was one-fourth of the 1 billion, 1.026 billion purchase price. And so in a six-month time span, he bought an asset at one price, a non-productive asset, at approximately $10,000 a coin. And then he loaded up even more when just six months later, it was four times the price. Interesting. And as you can see, he continued to buy, he continued to buy, um, 
and then he unloaded again with about a billion dollars worth of purchases between June of 2021 and the end of 2021. And during this time, he was getting Bitcoins for anywhere between $18,000 and $40,000. And he continued. He continued. And uh, as you're following this table, you can see in the right column, we have total dollars spent. Now remember, MicroStrategies is a company that only had before the Bitcoin purchases, about 800 billion, or sorry, 800 million dollars worth of assets. And so for them to purchase 3.9 billion in Bitcoin is an unbelievable amount of money compared to what the market cap of the business was. It's unbelievable. There really isn't any other CEO or owner in the United States who did something like this. There were companies like Tesla that spent a smaller portion of their balance sheet on Bitcoin. But then there's this. This is a whole nother level. This is like a hundred levels above what Tesla did. This would be like Tesla putting a hundred billion dollars into Bitcoin. That's what, that's what MicroStrategies did you know, relative to what they had and what they were worth. And in total, MicroStrategy to date has spent $3.91 billion at an average purchase price of $30,623, as you can see here. And what I find interesting about all of the purchases is the rate at which he has purchased these coins. It's very, it's very sporadic. He didn't seem to purchase the coins at a specific price. As you can see, like I was saying, he purchased uh, 21,000 coins for about $10,000 a coin. And then only six months later, he bought another 19,000, but paid four times the price. So he bought these coins at five, almost five times the price that he bought these coins. And obviously, he's down huge on these. He's down absolutely huge. You know, these are about $50,000 a coin. I mean, this is ridiculous. Like, this, th a billion dollars for micro strategies is more money than they have ever generated in net income. And he bought this in just a one-month time span. He spent a billion dollars. Who's giving him these loans? <laughs> That's the best question. Who's giving him this, this money? Like, how can, how can this sort of thing exist? Like, how can you lever yourself up like this? It feels like a lesson in business in itself, the fact that he could lever himself up like that, and there are banks out there that are going to let someone lever like that on Bitcoin, is interesting. It's crazy. But that's the story of the micro strategy Bitcoin purchases. And so here we are today and micro strategy is facing itself being down pretty much about 50% on their holdings, give or take, it changes every day, but only in the span of eight months. And that's the nature of crypto. It's just a store of value. And it's a non-productive asset that's extremely volatile. It's an asset that is only priced based off of what other people are, are willing to pay. I think Bitcoin will be around forever. It doesn't mean that Bitcoin is not the greater fool theory. It's like gold. And so, as MicroStrategies faces its obligations, it's going to have to rely on Bitcoin going back up in price. Because as of the current moment, if Bitcoin never recovers, if it stays at its current price, MicroStrategies might go out of business. Completely, because they're going to have a negative shareholder equity of $300 million. That's not something that they can make back in just a couple years. They can't just snap their fingers and make that back. The price of Bitcoin is directly tied to the micro strategy's share price now. They're two in the same. Because this, the other business that micro, like the business of micro strategy is not anything worth anything close 
to what they have in the Bitcoin holdings. And the risk on the Bitcoin holdings is ridiculous. If, they, if, if the Bitcoin holdings go down another 50%, which is completely possible, I don't understand what this business is going to do other than carry a negative billion and a half of shareholder equity. If the banks will let them do that, if there are people out there that will give them loans to do that. It's a good question. And so to finish off, I'd like to get a bit more into my personal take. I think that Bitcoin or the lesson of Bitcoin is a very important one in investing history. I think it's very important for any investor to study what happened to Sam Bankman fried what's happening with Michael Saylor, what's happening with all of these people that bought a non-productive asset. While one that is really cool, like I, I think that something that Michael Saylor has is he has a bias. He has a bias to Bitcoin because of how much he's interested in the object. And I feel like you can understand an object better than absolutely anybody, like Bitcoin. And I feel like Michael Saylor very well can say that he's surrounded by people who understand Bitcoin less than him. True. I give him that. But to say that he understands what it's worth to the world is a different story. And I think his purchases prove that. The time span of these purchases is irrational no matter what you say. It's irrational. It doesn't make sense. To have so much time to spend so much of a company's value on Bitcoin in such a short period of time is insane to me. And what Michael Saylor did is absolutely foolish. Like, for example, I can understand the, di the dynamics of a business like coal mining better than anybody. I can talk all about it. I can tell you what you can do here, what you can do there, the sort of places that you can go with coal mining. But a lot of people, the people that know the most about what they're talking about, they, they have a bias for overvaluing what these things are actually worth to other people. They have a bias to their own argument. And that's a bias that you got to watch out for as a good investor. And that's what Benjamin Graham and Warren Buffett talk about. As for a valuation on micro strategies, I'm a bit of a pessimist. And I personally think that MicroStrategies is worth no more than about a $500 million market cap. And if you look at the current market cap, the market values this security at $1.7 billion. I don't think that makes any sense. And let me tell you why. Like I said before, we have two separate things going on at MicroStrategies. We have Bitcoin and we have the other business. Over here, we have Bitcoin, we have assets, and we have liabilities. Right now, with Bitcoin at $17,000 a coin or so, this holding has more liabilities than it has assets, the Bitcoin holding. And we're down to the point that we now owe $400 million back to the bank at current prices. It's going to go up or down before the next report. But at current price is $400 million. We've lost a billion. And we have this other business that by itself was once worth about what the market cap is right now, but it's now carrying this billion dollar loss on this non-productive asset. And so for me, I once had a business that had $420 million worth of equity, but basically, I now have that same business, but with a giant, huge loss attached to it. And as a business that isn't growing, as a business that doesn't have a whole lot of revenue prospects, other than what they're currently doing, I don't see where they're going to go other than hoping that the price of Bitcoin recovers, which I find to be absolutely foolish. I don't think that CEOs, as a matter of principle, or owners should invest this sort of amount of money into a, a commodity. Let your investors do that themselves. When it comes to businesses, you actually have a unique insight. 
Michael Saylor is amazing when it comes to business. And so I just find it to be absolutely foolish what he's done with his business. And it's sad that for something that he started in 1989 to come all the way up to 2019, to work through all these different levels of business and to risk everything on Bitcoin is sad. And no matter what happens in the future, even if Bitcoin goes back up to $45,000, I don't care. It's dumb. And I, I don't like it. And I think that at some level, Michael Saylor has to admit to himself that he wronged his shareholders with his investments. And to continue to double down, to continue to double down, and if he keeps going, he keeps going, he's going to drive this business bankrupt. He bought way too much compared to what they had. Like, it's an important lesson in investing not to leverage yourself. Great investors, like, like a guy like Warren Buffett, he wouldn't tell you to leverage your securities portfolio at more than probably 30% of what you have, at absolute most. But you have a guy like Michael Saylor who levers his entire company times three on Bitcoin. During the Bitcoin craze, not during a time where there was sort of you know, normal interest in Bitcoin, but at the peak, at the craze. And as we know with Bitcoin, it is a decentralized asset that is price determined based off of what other people are willing to pay in terms of demand. And it does fall under the greater fool theory as a non-productive asset. It's just like gold, and I would recommend it to an investor like I would recommend gold. I'm not telling you not to buy Bitcoin, but to do what Michael Saylor did is one thing, right? To put 2% of your net worth into Bitcoin is a whole other. I find that, I find this to be safe, putting 2% of your net worth into Bitcoin. But for a company to put 10 times, 15 times the amount of extra cash that they have into Bitcoin is insane. It's irrational, it's unreasonable, and I want you to watch out if you are either a shareholder or a potential shareholder of a business like MicroStrategies, because these businesses are very deceptive. They like to sell you on things that don't actually come to fruition. They like to sell you on things that don't actually exist. So watch out, YouTube. Thank you.